Hello, and welcome to this video where I'll show you how to work with the Databricks extension for Visual Studio Code. This extension enables you to connect to your remote Databricks workspaces directly from Visual Studio Code, running on your local development machine. With this extension, you can synchronize code, you can run Python files on a Databricks cluster, and you can run notebooks and Python files as workflows. In this tutorial, I'll guide you through installing the Databricks extension, configuration and authentication, connecting to your remote Databricks cluster, running a Python file on that cluster, setting up a sync destination, running a Python file as a job, and running a Python notebook as a job. Okay, so first of all, let me show you how to install the Databricks extension for Visual Studio Code. As a prerequisite, please ensure you already have Visual Studio Code installed. So to install the Databricks extension, you can search for it under Extensions in Visual Studio Code. So navigate to Extensions and then search for Databricks. So you can install it by clicking here. And it should be done in a moment. So once you install it, you should see it on the side here. OK, so now I'm going to navigate to a folder and open it via the Explorer. So I'll click on Explorer and then Open Folder. So I'm going to create a folder for this demo. I'll click on New Folder and call it VS underscore code underscore demo and then click on Create. And then open. So here it is. It's just an empty folder from my local computer. So now let's configure and authenticate the Databricks extension. I'll do this using a personal access token. So if you go to the Databricks extension and click on Show Quick Start, you should get some relevant information here, including step by step instructions on how to configure the extension, as you can see. OK, so if you click on Configure Databricks, you'll be asked to specify a Databricks host. So you need to paste in the Databricks host URL here. So I'll switch over to my Databricks workspace and copy it. So I'm in my Databricks workspace. The host URL is here. So it's up to this point where it says .NET with a slash. So copy that. So let me paste that in here. And then press Enter. Now you'll be asked to authenticate. You can do this via the Azure CLI, but for that, you need it installed. Instead, I'll configure it using a Databricks profile. So click on Edit Databricks Profiles. So if this is your first time doing it, like me, then it will be empty. So you'll need to create a profile. You can give the profile a name by specifying it inside of square brackets. So I'll just call my profile Pathfinder Analytics. And then what you need to do is you need to specify the host, the jobs underscore API, which is just 2.0, and then the token. So the host is just the URL. So I can just copy that here. Now for the token, we need to get that on the Databricks side and generate a personal access token. So let me do that now. So on your Databricks workspace, Go to Admin Settings, Developer, and then Access Tokens. Generate a new token. Make sure you copy this, and then click on Done. Now back in Visual Studio, paste in the token here. Great. Now you can save this by clicking Command and S on a Mac or Control and S on a Windows. Great, so that's saved. So now, when I click on Configure Databricks, it will remember the URL. So click on that, and then specify the profile you've just created, which for me is Pathfinder Analytics. Notice how it now says connected to, and that is your workspace host URL. So we are now connected. So on this Databricks extension, under the configuration, Notice the authentication. This is my user email address. 
and this is the host URL. Under cluster, it says none attached right now. And similarly, I haven't initiated the sync, which will synchronize my local files with the remote Databricks workspace. Okay, so now let's attach a cluster to Visual Studio Code so we can run some code on a Databricks cluster from our remote workspace. So back in my Databricks workspace, under Compute, note that I have a cluster running. It's called Pathfinder Analytics Cluster. So in Visual Studio Code, I'll click on this cog next to cluster. And then as you can see, here is the cluster. So I can attach it by selecting that cluster. And if I expand this, you can see here is the cluster. I can stop the cluster and start it again by pressing here. So now I can run code on my local computer directly on the remote workspace using this cluster. So now in the Explorer, on my folder, let me create a new file. I will call it demo.py and I'll just paste in some code. So now let me save this. So this code simply creates a data frame and then displays it here. So now to run this, you can click on this down button next to the play icon, or you can actually just right click here and then click on upload and run file on Databricks. So let me do that. Great. So now the file is running and you can see that on the debug console. So it's running the file. And here is the output. Here is the data frame that we've created. So you'll notice when I ran this file, I clicked on upload and run file on Databricks. So let me show you where this file is in the Databricks workspace. So in my Databricks workspace, if I click on workspace and under home, there's a folder created called .ide. If I click into that, you should see a folder called vs underscore code underscore demo with a unique identifier after that. So if I click into that, here is the Python file, demo.py. So as you can see here, under sync destination, here is the name of the folder that was created in our Databricks workspace, and that is where the file was saved. So this is currently watching for changes. So any change I make here gets reflected in the Databricks workspace. You can also change this location because right now it gets synchronized to the Databricks workspace, but I can also synchronize it to a repo. And let me show you how. So you can click on view, command palette, and then search for preferences, and then open user settings. So click on that. So then what you want to do is go to the user tab, extensions, locate Databricks, and then under sync destination type, change it from workspace to repo. You'll need to reload this for the changes to take effect. To reload it, go on view, command palette, and then developer reload window. So click on that. And then this should reload. Great. So we're ready to sync a new destination. So back in Databricks, I'll show you where I expect the files to be synced. So before, they were synced here, in home, under this .ide folder. Now they should be synced here, in repos. So on sync destination, click on this cog icon, and now it asks you to create a new sync destination. So click on that. This is the name of your sync destination. So I will just keep it as the same name as the folder in my local system, and then press enter. So now you'll notice that the state is stopped. So click on this refresh icon, and now the sync is in progress. So now back in Databricks, notice under repos, I have a new folder with my user profile. And then inside of that, I have vs underscore code underscore demo dot IDE. 
So it even says IDE here. So if I click into that, you can see here is the demo.py file that I created. Now, just to be clear, the sync is one directional. It doesn't happen both ways. So if I make changes directly on Databricks, they will not get synced back to my local folder. So let me just add a comment and I will say comment from Databricks. Now in Visual Studio, on this file, I'll add a comment in the same place and I will say comment from VS and then I'll save that. And then I go back to my Databricks workspace and then I refresh this. Notice it says comment from VS. So the changes get synced only in one direction, and that is from Visual Studio to Databricks, not the other way around. Great. So I've demonstrated how to create a sync destination. This can be on your repos or on your workspace, as you can see here. The destination is synchronized to changes that you make in your local development environment. Okay. So previously, we ran this demo.py file on a cluster. We can also run it as a workflow job. So on the file, if you locate that file, right click, and instead of upload and run file on Databricks, you can run the file as a workflow on Databricks. So this will run as a Databricks job. So let me click on that. So notice the difference. So this time, it actually creates a job. So you can see that from the task run ID and the fact that it started a job. So it says Databricks job run. And as you can see, here is the output. So now back in Databricks, if I go to workflows, job runs, here is the job that was just executed by job runs submit API. And if I click into that, you can see it's a Python job because it was a Python notebook. And here is the output. So let me now show you how to run a notebook as a job. So this is currently not a notebook. It's just a Python file. So I'll create a new notebook and I'll call it demo underscore notebook dot py. So this isn't a notebook yet. This is essentially just a Python file. So let me actually just copy this here as well. So it contains the same contents. So what makes this a Python file and what makes this a notebook will be due to some special comments that I add on this file. And let me show you that. So I'll close this. And now the comments I'll add are as follows. So right at the top, so it has to be on the very first line, you type a hash followed by a space and then Databricks notebook source. So this now turns it into a Databricks notebook. And then you can separate each code as an individual cell by specifying hash, a space in capitals command with 10 hyphens. So this code up to here will be one cell. And this will be one cell. And then this will be on one cell. So let me save this. Now let me run this as a workflow on Databricks. So now notice the difference. This gets run as if it's a notebook. You can see each individual cell here, 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 and here. And then you also get the output for this cell here. And that is because of these special comments. So this Databricks notebook source comment tells us your Databricks that this should be imported as a notebook and not as a Python module. Under workflows, job runs, here is the second job. And you'll notice this time it is a notebook rather than a Python file. And you can also see the output of each individual cell. Furthermore, on the workspace, repos, this was imported as a notebook rather than a Python file, like this demo.py file. So if I click into it, you can see this is a notebook. 
Now, as a final bit of information, you can delete this repository very easily just by going on repos, locating the repository, clicking on these three dots, and then moving it to trash. You can also do that with this .ide folder by clicking on the three dots and then moving it to trash. Of course, you'll also need to stop synchronizing on Visual Studio as well. And you can do that by navigating to the extension and then stopping the synchronization. Perfect. So that wraps up my quick guide on the Databricks extension for Visual Studio Code. In this video, we covered everything from installing and setting up the extension to authenticating and configuring it. We also looked at how to execute Python files on your cluster, run them as jobs, and even turn a Python file into a notebook for job execution. For more information and useful resources, be sure to check out the video description. If you found this video useful, please give it a like and share it. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I'd love for you to join my community to keep up to date with my latest videos.